When Elon Musk bought Twitter, it was a sinking ship. Ah, are we gonna have a job? Oh my god, Elon, what are we gonna do? It was four months away from bankruptcy and filled with massive problems. So, I, I, the gravity of the situation is perhaps uh, not too well understood. Uh, On top of that, he had to overpay tremendously for it, cannibalizing the value of his other companies. And on top of all that, every decision he makes is publicly scrutinized. He's fixing a sinking ship in front of a theater of people who all have an opinion on how to do it, while against the race of time. It was a decision he didn't have to do. It was one that didn't make sense, but he did it anyway. And ever since the takeover, Elon's moved fast, unlike anything we've ever seen, especially with a company that size. He's running Twitter like a startup, and boy oh boy, is he right sometimes, but wrong others. In this video, we'll deconstruct Elon's decisions, from his push to free speech to his battle against the box, and see just how he's kept this thing alive thus far. <laughs> okay, okay. I never realized how intense these intros are until a couple days later when I rewatch it and I go, wow, we should all chill out for a second. Let's, let's all take a moment. <laughs> Before we get into the actual meat of the video, I wanted to take a quick second and just say thank you. Seriously. You know, I've tried to do YouTube for the past two years quite inconsistently and badly, but my last video was really my first win I've ever had on the platform. Not only from a views and results number, but also just the feedback that I got from it. I truly was shocked with how many people really appreciated the storytelling and all the different small bits that I did. My goal is to take interesting topics and present them in an interesting manner. And my last video really felt like I used every tool in my creative toolbox. So again, thank you for all the comments. It was truly a one of a kind feeling. <laughs> all right, anyway though, let's get back to one of those moments we know is gonna be in history books for our kids. Elon Musk buying Twitter. So Elon's made a ton of moves since buying Twitter like nine months ago. But first, we need to talk about his takeover because it wasn't any peaceful ordeal. Elon and the former CEO Parag Agrawal basically had this seven month long public fight. It went something like this. Yo, Mr. CEO, guess what? Now that I own 10% of the company, you better put me on the board. <sighs> Shoot. All right, fine, Elon. I guess you can join. <laughs> Thanks, man. But let me ask you something. Is Twitter like dying? Like look at all these top accounts that are barely even posting. Listen, man, can you just chill? I get you can say that, but we're struggling internally already. You're really distracting, and it's not helping. <laughs> Let me ask you something, Mr. CEO. What have you done for Twitter this week? What have you done for Twitter at all? You know what? I'm not gonna join the board. I'm gonna buy Twitter myself. Buy it then! Hold on, wait. If I'm gonna pay $44 billion for this, it better be what you say it is. How many bots are on this thing anyway? Not many. According to who? Where's your proof? I can't disclose that for legal reasons. Just trust me. No, you, you, you know what? Screw it, deal is off. Oh, no way. You talk smack about us or stock price fell. You know what, take this. Oh yeah? Guess what? Take this. Okay then, it's a fight. Says, quote, Musk apparently believes that he, unlike every other party subject to Delaware contract law, is free to change his mind, trash the company, disrupt its operations, destroy stockholder value. You know what? You wanna just do the deal on original terms? Yeah, sure. Hmm. So as of October 4th, 2022, Twitter was all Elon's. He successfully did the largest tech takeover ever, but really his fight started now. He soon learns that the status of Twitter hasn't been great. In fact, in the last six out of eight years, Twitter has been unprofitable. They've been losing money. And when Elon bought the platform, the situation got only worse. No, I mean, I, I, the gravity of the situation is perhaps uh, not too well understood. The point at which uh, the company, the, the tra transaction closed, uh, Twitter was tracking to uh, lose uh, over $3 billion a year uh, and had $1 billion in the bank. So that's four months to death. 
So this is your starting position. How, how would you feel? Many of us see Twitter as this super influential platform because a lot of celebrities and government officials are on there. But when you compare Twitter's monthly active users to Instagram's or Facebook's or all the other social media platforms, it's not high. Twitter is actually quite small. On top of that, its growth has been slow and advertisers have never seen it as a great platform. So when you take this starting position and mix Elon's crazy work culture, you get what Twitter is today. Detective, uh, detective, did you hear the news? We need to address the world in 20 minutes. Is Elon Musk doing a good job at Twitter? Is he making the platform better? 20 minutes? Shoot, I don't even know where to start. There's so much to consider. We need to build our board. Okay, so what are the problems he's facing? Well, we know Twitter's unprofitable. True, but what else? Um, spam? That's right. When he bought Twitter, there was a ton of spam. Hence why he tried to pull out of buying Twitter altogether. Yep, according to my research, he claimed that when buying Twitter, 20% of all users were spam. Interesting. So what did he do? Well, simply he just removed all the bots and the spam. Wait, really? Why didn't Twitter do that earlier? Why did it take Elon to do that? Well, Elon claims that previous management was incentivized by user growth so they never actually looked at who the users were. Mmm, great, so that's like a gold star for Elon. Yeah, but also this is when Elon Musk introduced one of the most controversial updates in social media history. So the introduction of Twitter Blue was quite heated, but let's start with why Elon Musk decided to implement it in the first place. Many people think it was just a money grab which makes sense, it costs eight bucks a month. And that's partially true. I mean, Elon doesn't want 100% of Twitter's revenue to be from ads, but the reality is subscriptions wouldn't be that much revenue. The example Elon gives is if a million people were to pay $100 per year, that's only $100 million extra in revenue. When compared to the $4.5 billion they make from ads, it's a drop in the bucket. Elon's bigger reason is that this is the only way to prevent a huge AI takeover of the platform. But allowing only paid verified accounts to rank to the top of conversations keeps the platform human. He also mentions that the legacy verification system was flawed in that people would pay tens of thousands of dollars for the blue check, so a hard <clears throat> reset was necessary. Yo, detective. Yo, detective. Hello? What are you doing? Ugh, whatever. But as you can expect, there's also downsides of Twitter Blue, one being the infamous example of Eli Lilly. Just days after rolling out Twitter Blue, someone made a parody account of this company, Eli Lilly. And honestly, it did look quite real. They later tweeted out that insulin would be free and this sent the company's valuation to drop by $15 billion just by one tweet. So yikes on that. So what do we think? Was Twitter Blue a good decision or a bad one? What do we tell the people? I don't know, I don't know. I guess we can come back to it. We only have 15 more minutes. And by the way, I thought of another problem that Elon is trying to tackle. So this is the number one reason why Elon bought Twitter in the first place, according to him. He wants to make a digital town square, basically a place where anyone can voice their opinion on an equal playing field. And he says this is the only way to have a true democracy. got something wrong and over time i think if twitter is the best source of truth it will succeed and if and if we are not the best source of truth we will fail now this sounds nice and dandy right free speech in a vacuum we all want the ability to say what we want to but we don't live in a vacuum so there are some intricacies yo detective when do we get to the point where elon fires everybody yo chill I'm getting there. Don't, don't ruin the surprise. You see, the steps to free speech weren't easy. In fact, in Elon's words, he said that it was actually quite painful because he had to fire a lot of employees. And especially after how he was criticized for it, people said it felt haphazard, that he was uncaring. Imagine waking up and going to the office and all of a sudden your key card is locked. Or the Gmail account that you've been working in, you can't access anymore. But on the flip side, Elon said he had to. Again, Twitter only had four months until bankruptcy. So what else is Elon gonna do? He had to fire all 5,000 people in that manner. He couldn't look them in the eye. He didn't have time. 
Unless drastic action was taken, no one would have had a job. So what, are we gonna tell the world that this was a good decision or a bad one? I don't know, man, it's too tough. Well, time is ticking. We need to make up a decision. The world is asking. We have five minutes remaining. I mean, okay, wh wh what do we have on misinformation or hate speech? Mm, oh, it's on the holograminator. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Here we go. Oh, come on now. This is the most infamous clip of them all. That, you know, we have spoken to people who, who have been sacked that used to be in content moderation and they just say they just, there's not enough people to police this stuff, particularly around, um, particularly around hate speech. Do, do, is that what hate speech are you address? talking about? I mean, you use Twitter. Right. Do you see a rise in hate speech? P personally, my uh, for you, I would see I get, I get more of that kind of content, yeah, personally. Content you don't like or, or hateful? What do you mean to describe a hateful thing? Yeah, a content that will solicit a, a reaction, something that may include something that is slightly racist or slightly sexist, those kinds of those kinds of things. So you think if I'm, something is slightly sexist, it should be banned? I, no, is that I'm what not, you're saying? I'm not saying anything. I'm well, saying. I'm just curious. What you, I'm, I'm trying to understand what you mean by hateful con content, and I'm asking for specific examples. And you just said that if something is slightly sexist, that's hateful content. Does that mean that it should be banned? Well, you've asked me, you've asked me whether my feed, whether it's got less or more, it, I'd say it's got slightly more. Can, right? you, can you name one example? I, I honestly don't need, I, I, honestly, you I don't You can't name I, a single example. I'll tell you why, because I don't actually use that for you. Well, I only look well at hang my, on a second, you said you've seen more hateful content, but you can't name a single example, not even one. I'm not sure I've used that feed for the last three or four weeks and I... Well, then I how did you see the hateful content? content? Right. And you I, can't I, give a single I, one. And, I, and, I, and I'm saying... I, I, then I, I say, sir, that you don't know what you're talking about. Really? Yes, because you can't give me a single example of hateful con of content, not even one tweet, and yet you claimed that the hateful content was high. Dang. Ah, oh, yeah, dang. Shoot, man. I don't know if this is good or bad either. I mean, look at how many things this is connected to. Detective, I don't know if we're getting anywhere. Ooh, what about his fight against media bias? I mean, no one likes bias, right? Yeah, I guess he did open source the algorithm, basically showing everyone how things are recommended. Like, YouTube and TikTok don't do that. True, that's pretty big. And how can we forget about the Twitter files? That was like one of the biggest things that happened on Twitter. No, I didn't forget about that, but that's also highly debated. Some people say that it's great that Twitter unveiled those internal documents and others say that it promoted conspiracy theories. I don't have a clear answer. Well, we need an answer, Detective. How about the fact that the Twitter engineers reworked the code to decrease the CPU usage by 80% or all of the creator monetization tools? Detective, look at the big picture. Yeah. The world is waiting for your answer. Is Elon Musk doing a good job? No, is Twitter no, no. 2.0 even better? We're out of time. We gotta go on stage. Detective, detective, what's the answer? Is Elon a good CEO? Detective, we're depending on an answer. We need to know now, we need to know. I... Um, uh... But maybe that's the point. Regardless of what decisions Elon makes on Twitter, there'll always be people arguing on both sides of whatever he does. And honestly, the reason I wanted to make this video was not to convince you if Elon Musk is a good CEO or a bad one for Twitter. You can make up your own mind on that but instead share that the more I grow up, the more I realize that the way we just analyzed Elon is the same way people will analyze you. Whatever you say or do, people will have an opinion on you. Oh, you wanna leave school and start a clothing brand? Oh, you wanna move cities? You wanna break up with this person, switch careers, learn a new subject, or go on a solo trip around the world? People will always judge, but at the end of the day, you're the only one who has the big picture. It's easy to look at any one of these and make an opinion, but the moment you look at the bigger web, things get more complicated. From dropping out of school to moving to LA, then moving to New York City, and every topic that I want to create on, people have opinions. And honestly, I let this affect me greatly in the past. I let people's opinions dictate how I go about things, but living like that is very limiting. <laughs> and sure, my problems are not as high stakes as Elon's, but to see him sail through the turbulent tide of opinions and make his decisions transparent, it's impressive. I look at this as history happening live. So as we watch this ship rebuild and half the people around you are saying one thing and the other half the opposite, you have three options. You can listen to the good, you can listen to the bad, or you can let all the noise around you disappear and appreciate the show up ahead.
but... No, you, you... You know what? Screw it. Deal is off. Oh! oh. That was good! <laughs> How many companies have you built? None! None! <laughs> ah! Oh my god. Oh my god. This is day 17 of making this video. It was due three days ago. He just has lost his mind. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's not a mess. Got a, we got a shaky road up ahead, but we're gonna make it. We're gonna make it. Thanks for subscribing.